What is up, Flutter devs? Today we're going to recreate the coding challenge number 50 from the coding train, which is animated circle packing. We're going to generate circles at a bunch of random locations and animate their expansion until we end up with a canvas packed to the brim with circles. Let's get into it. Here we are with our typical coding environment. We have Android Studio open with a Flutter project ready to go. We're in the Flutter processing project. And uh, over here I have the initial sketch running, which just has a default size and color. So let's begin by adjusting the size of this sketch and the background color to prepare us for this exercise. I want to draw your attention to one difference from some prior or previous exercises. In previous videos, we used what was called the simple constructor for a, a processing widget uh, or for a sketch within a widget. Uh, you'll see here the processing widget, and normally we would define our entire sketch right here. We would say uh, sketch.simple, and then we would pass in callbacks for setup and draw. Today, we're going to actually implement our sketch in more of a traditional way where we have a class dedicated to the sketch. This allows us to explore this second approach. Uh, again, for context, for those who haven't been tuning into these videos, we are porting all of the processing APIs over to Flutter so that you can do all the processing stuff with a Flutter version, which means you can integrate it into all of your other Flutter stuff. Up to this point, we've been testing a kind of shorthand, convenient way to define a sketch with the setup and draw callbacks, as well as, I think, on mouse clicked or something like that, various mouse interaction callbacks. But we also want developers to be able to just define a sketch class and implement that way. But we haven't really tried that up to this point. So we're going to try that today and make sure it works along with the other stuff that we're doing in this exercise. So right here, this circle packing sketch, this is what sets up and draws and interacts with our sketch. This is where we want those various callbacks. Here in circle packing sketch, we will override setup. We'll call through uh, to actually the super, I think super's already handled all the stuff that we care about. Now, I don't know why it's generating this signature. I'll need to check this later. We want a future void, not a future function. I may need to update the, um, the sketch API here for that. But anyways, here's our setup method. It's asynchronous. I also, based on one of your comments, I probably need to come back and change this definition to a future or void so that you don't need to worry about async when you're not doing asynchronous stuff, something for another uh, video, another exercise. But here in setup, the first thing that I want to do is configure the dimensions of this sketch to what we want. Uh, so we want to say, we want to set the size where we have a size method. I want the width in this case to be 800 and the height to be 400. Now notice that we're not saying S dot. And that's because we now, unlike previously where we defined our sketch up here, we're now defining our sketch within a subclass of sketch. So we don't need S dot because S is this. The sketch itself has the size method, so we can invoke it without any qualifiers now. Now, not only do I want a size of 800 by 400, but here in draw, which also needs some API updates it looks like, uh, I want to paint the background with black. Now let's save that. And over here, you'll notice that we now have an 800 by 400 sketch with a black background color. And now we're in a position to draw some circles. So the circles that we're going to draw are going to be based on a class that we will call circle. And circle will support uh, an asynchronous method called paint. Actually, I guess in this case, it doesn't need to be asynchronous because we're not going to do any asynchronous operations. Now, in uh, in Dan's code over on the coding train, he often refers to this method as show. I think canonically, it probably makes more sense as paint. And then we are going to pass in the sketch. I'll just call that S to match our previous videos. Now, a circle, if we're going to paint a circle... Uh, we need to know what the radius of that circle is. We also need to know its offset. So we will have an offset and we will have a radius. 
which we need to then take into the constructor. And these are both required. Now, given an offset and a radius, it's pretty easy to draw a circle. We can just say S dot circle, and then we're going to pass in the offset for the center and radius times two for the diameter. Uh, however, there is the question about how we are drawing a circle in terms of stroke and fill. And so in this case, uh, we want a stroke weight of two. We want a stroke color of white. And we will say fill with black. You could go transparent on the fill. In this case, it doesn't matter because the because black is the color of the background. Whichever preference you have doesn't matter. But this will cause our circle to have a, a two pixel stroke of white, fill color of black, and then we draw the circle at the desired location with the desired radius. This forms the basis for how we're going to draw a single circle at a single moment in time. We will need to extend that to provide the animations that we're looking for and some of the boundary calculations. But for now, that allows us to draw a circle. So let's come up here to our circle packing sketch. We're eventually going to want multiple circles. So we're going to set ourselves up with a circles list. And then here in setup, uh, for now, we're just going to create one circle just to make sure we can get this working. So circle offset, we will say uh, 400 comma 200. That's the center of the screen radius. Uh, let's say 50. Then down here in draw, we want to loop through all of the circles, which again for now is just we only have one of them, but we're going to say and that is the wrong language. There we go. Circle in circles, circle dot paint. We're going to pass this as the sketch. Let's save that. And there's our 50 by 50 circle. That's how we draw one circle at one size. But now what else do we want to do? The idea is that every single frame, we're going to randomly place some number of additional circles. Every frame, we're going to add more circles to an open location and all the while, as we're adding circles all over, the circles that have already been added are expanding. But these circles, the moment that they touch the sides of the sketch or they touch each other, they need to stop expanding. They, they halt their size. And then over time, we end up packing the entire sketch with circles. So first, I guess let's get the animation part working. I think I think Dan called this grow. He had a grow method, something to that effect. Now we're going to, we're going to call grow on every frame, but it's actually going to be up to the circle whether or not it grows. So we're going to have a Boolean is growing, which is initially true. We're going to see shortly that you can set it to false at when it should stop growing. But in grow, if is growing is true, then the radius, we're going to say plus equals half a pixel. And we want to call that every frame. So up here where we call circle dot paint, we're going to say grow. And now you see it growing, but it's going to grow forever. We have nothing bounding this circle. Uh, also for the record, we want to begin these with a radius of one because uh, it, we, we don't ever want these to overlap. And so if we're going to pick open pixels, then the only way that we know for sure that a new circle doesn't overlap an existing circle is if it begins with a radius of one. I guess technically a radius of 0.5, but a radius of one won't kill us. The next logical thing to figure out is how do we prevent this circle from going beyond the bounds? For that, we can create a, we can essentially have a method whose sole job is to tell us uh, whether we have exceeded the available space. 
So I'm, for lack of a better name, I'm going to call that is against edges, and we're going to pass in the, the size, which is the screen size. Uh, in some cases, that could be a rectangle, but because we know that, that the left side is zero and the top is zero, we don't need a rectangle. We just need the width and the height. So the question is, has this circle met or exceeded the available space within the screen? Now, to make that calculation easier on us, um, I take that back. I was going to say we could turn this the size into a rect, but I think rect doesn't actually have... Rect does not provide a comparison with another rect that does what we want, so that's not going to help us. What we do want, though, is a bounding rectangle for our circle. So we can say boundary rect equals rect from circle... So this is a rect has this nice little, I don't know if it's a factory method or a name constructor or what it is here, but we can get a rectangle that corresponds to exactly the boundaries of a circle. And guess what? We have a circle. So that works for us. The center is offset. The radius is radius. Now we, ha now we know our bounding box. We need to compare that to the screen and see if we have exceeded the available space. Uh, so this is going to be a, a composite condition here, multiple checks. So we're going to say if boundary rect dot left is less than or equal to zero. Oh, uh, I guess we probably don't need the parentheses there. We'll see. Or boundary rect dot top is less than or equal to zero. Or boundary rect dot right is greater than or equal to screen size dot width or boundary rect dot bottom is greater than or equal to screen size dot height. That should tell us if we have met or exceeded any of the four boundaries available to us. And then we need to use this method to stop growing, essentially. So we'll have a method here that says stop growing which is just going to set is growing equal to false. Then back up here in our uh, draw method, before we grow and paint, we're going to loop through every, well, actually, sorry, we're already uh, looping through every circle, aren't we? So for this circle, we're going to say if circle, nope, if circle dot is against edges, and here we can create screen size outside the loop, which is width and height. And we have to go to double, to double. Then we're going to say circle, stop growing. Now this, the names aren't great here because even though we call stop growing, we then invoke grow anyway. But grow internally knows that if, if is growing is false, we're not going to grow anymore. Let's try that. So this thing should stop growing at the, once it hits the top and bottom. There it is. So now, now that we know that we stopped growing at the boundaries, let's generate more circles on every frame. We'll create a method, generate new circles. Now, before we implement that, let's decide how many we want to generate per frame. We're going to create a constant for that. We'll call it new circles per frame, and let's go with 10. Then down here, let's see. So if, obviously, we want to drop in. 10 circles. I guess for now, we'll just loop from, again, zero to that constant. We'll have to come back to this in a moment and work in the concept of circles intersecting or overlapping other circles because we don't want to put new circles where circles already exist. But for now, we will say int i is zero, where i is less than new circles for, per frame. We will say circles.add circle. And now, now we need a random offset. I'll do that in a second. The radius is still going to be one, but we need a random offset. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to say offset. We want a random width between zero 
and the width of the sketch and zero in the height of the sketch. That gives us a random offset within the available space. We're going to add this many circles to random locations with a radius of one every single frame, which means up here before we grow and paint all of the circles, we need to generate new circles. Now let's try that. Whew, lots of circles. And that's probably going to uh, blow up something pretty soon left unchecked. It's kind of a, it looks kind of like an explosion though, huh? I bet if you put some interesting colors in there, some reds and yellows and grays, you might get a neat little, might get a neat little explosion effect or maybe do some water ripples or something. Okay, but obviously we are creating way too many of these things <clears throat> in way too many places, which now begs the question, you know, how do we know when these circles overlap and how do we stop them from growing if that's the case? Well, let's come down here to our circle and let's actually create two different checks that will be useful for us. So first we will we'll answer the question, does this circle overlap another circle? The way that you can tell if any two circles overlap is if the distance between the center of both circles, if that distance is less than or equal to the two different radii added together, then you know for sure the circles touch or overlap. So we will say here, if other dot offset minus our offset, remember offset has two dimensions, it's essentially a vector. <clears throat> we're gonna get the distance between the centers, and we're going to say if that distance is less than or equal to other dot radius minus our radius, excuse me, plus our radius, then they overlap. But we're also going to introduce a second check, which is going to be useful for us, which is contains. Does this circle contain the other? Actually, not even, not even another circle, an offset. This is how we're going to make sure we don't generate uh, new circles within existing circles. We're going to say, off, we're going to do the same check as the last one for the most part with just a little bit of a difference. We're going to add stroke weight. Um, which I said we don't have that as a variable, do we? Uh, let's come up here. Double stroke weight equals two. And then down here where we draw, let's make that stroke weight. And this should be radius. Now we'll come back up here and we will first, we're, let's stop the circles from running into each other. For every circle, we have to compare every other circle. We'll come down here. So we'll say, first of all, we only need to do this if we're growing. If we're not growing, then it doesn't matter. So let's expose growing like this. If circle dot is growing, so if we're still growing, then we're going to loop through all other circles. Now, if the other circle, if we're comparing ourself to ourself, that's not something we want to do, because uh, then that's always going to be true. But then we're going to say, okay, this we have circle one. Now we're comparing to circle two, and we want to say if circle overlaps other circle then circle stop growing okay you see how they've all stopped growing now we there's still an overlap problem we're dropping new circles on top of existing circles but the ones that started to expand they stopped once they hit another circle so now let's figure out how to avoid creating new circles on top of existing circles. And that happens down here in generate new circles. We're going to return a Boolean from this. So we'll say generates a group of new circles 
if there is room to do so. Returns true if new circles were added or false if there wasn't enough room. Now we need to change the behavior of this method. Because we're picking random locations, the kind of the best we can do is to just try to pick a location a certain number of times. And if we haven't been able to find an open location after a certain period of time, that's when we decide, okay, we're packed. We've packed the sketch. But for that, we're going to use a constant, which is, what should we, what should we call this? Max, whoops, max new circle attempts. And we'll say 100. So we will try up to 100 different locations on this sketch before we give up. We can keep this loop, but inside of here, we need to do something a little bit different. We need to track the number of times that we try a, a given location. And let's create, let's declare an offset here, which is random offset. Currently, we're already doing that directly in our circle constructor, but we need to check the offset first. And we will say Boolean overlaps other circle. And that's initially, we're going to assume that it doesn't. And then we're going to use a do while loop. We're going to say while overlaps other circle. In here, we want to say random, we're going to, let's, this is an implementation down here of random offsets. So we'll take random offset equals that random offset. But now, given that random offset, we need to check with every other circle on the screen to see if we overlap that circle. So we're going to have to say for circle in circles, if circle contains our random offset, then overlap overlaps other circle is true. And then we're going to break out of this loop. But we also need to reset this variable overlaps other circle. We need to reset it every time that we come into this loop and try again. Now after this loop, Either the random offset overlaps a circle or it doesn't. Now, regardless, we can increase our attempts by one. If attempts is greater than or equal to the max new circle attempts, not only are we going to uh, return false, take the, oh, we want to stop looping. Um, once we have packed the screen, there's no need to go through the draw call anymore. So we're going to come up here. We're going to say did find room. And if not did find room, we're going to call no loop. We're going to stop drawing anything at all. We're going to return false right there. Otherwise, we can add the circle. And there you can see that now we're packing the screen and we've stopped drawing. Um, so I know I kind of rambled through that and then ran it, but it, so let, let's walk through this again. This, we, we run generate new circles on every single frame, every frame and every frame. We try to add a certain number of new circles equal to this constant new circles per frame. We start by grabbing a random offset somewhere on the screen. We take that random offset and we look at every other circle that's already on the screen. And if it overlaps, what's going to happen is we're going to come down out of this loop. Ignore this for a second. We're going to come down out of this loop and we're going to hit this while condition. 
And if we overlap, we're going to do this all over again. That's what, that's what this condition is for. So we're going to keep looping until we find a location where we do not overlap another circle. However, if we do that a hundred times, we're going to decide there's no more room, at least as far as we're concerned. You could do a thousand times, you could do 10,000, but we're going to decide that after a hundred loops, if we can't find a place to park our car, there's no parking available for this new circle. If attempts is greater than max new circle attempts return false, we failed. Assuming we make it through this loop and we found a random offset that doesn't overlap, we're going to add a new circle. And after we add a new circle, we're going to come back up to the top of this for loop and we're going to do it again until we have created the desired number of new circles for this frame. Then back up here, assuming we did find room and created new circles, we're going to keep on going as usual. We're going to get the screen size and we're going to see if any of the circles hit the edges of the screen. If not, we're going to see if any circles hit each other. If not, we're going to grow. Now, in terms of order of operations, it might make more sense to check maybe the growth after, the, after you grow the circle. I, I don't know. It depends on which order you add to the radius and then compare the radii. You might want to be a little careful with the order here. In our case, I don't, I don't care if these strokes overlap half a pixel or a pixel. It doesn't matter to me. But if you do care about precision, then be very careful with this order of operations. Now, let's see if we can adjust. You know, none of these circles got very large. And one possible reason for that is that uh, we are creating so many per frame that none of them get very large. Let's, let's go as small as we can. Let's generate only one per frame. See, we do get much larger circles at that point. Still not very large, but still relatively large. You could even imagine supporting a fractional number there, which we don't, but if like a fraction becomes a, a kind of statistic or you know if you have 0.5 then you would create a new circle every other frame if it's 0.3 you do it every third frame and then the more you slow it down the larger the early circles would become at the same time if, what if we do 100 per frame tiny little circles but again, as I mentioned earlier, you can kind of start to see how this circle packing, depending on how you tweak it, how you color it, and what your rules are for what can overlap or not, you could end up with a neat little water bubble effect or water ripple effect or smoke effect or explosion effect. There could be all sorts of interesting things there. I think that's going to do it for this one. I believe this is as far as this particular exercise went. But what we are going to do in the next video is continue with the same concept where we're going to bring in a bitmap image with text on it that says flutter. And we're going to generate circles just on top of that text. So we're going to spell flutter with circles that still do the animation expansion and packing uh, behavior on top of the text. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to tune in to the next video and I'll see you then.